Hello everyone, we're coming to you live from the Gaylord Lukama Ministries, the Rama Church. Rise up and shine, take a good shower and put on your best attire and look good for the Lord. It's time to turn on your smartphones and gadgets to our live service on YouTube. Gather all your family members and get ready to be filled with the Word of God in the comfort of your living room. With a Bible and not a on your side, do share and comment as you follow our live services every Friday and Sundays. In case you have just joined us, please do click the subscribe button on the right to the Gerlot Lukama Ministries and get ready to be blessed by Pastor Gerlot Lukama through his life-changing sermons. Thank you for joining us. Shalom. Hello everyone, we're coming to you live from the Gaylord Lukama Ministries, the Rama Church. Rise up and shine, take a good shower and put on your best attire and look good for the Lord. It's time to turn on your smartphones and gadgets to our live service on YouTube. Gather all your family members and get ready to be filled with the Word of God in the comfort of your living room. With a Bible and not on your side, do share and comment as you follow our live services every Friday and Sundays. In case you have just joined us, please do click the subscribe button on the right to the Gerlot Lukama Ministries and get ready to be blessed by Pastor Gerlot Lukama through his life-changing sermons. Thank you for joining us. Shalom. Good morning, church. What a blessing it is to come to you live this Sunday morning. Excited once again over the opportunity that God in His grace and mercy has orchestrated for you and I uh, this morning. As far as, uh, or as much as this is a very cold morning uh, here in Johannesburg, we are so glad, very grateful over the opportunity it is for us to come to you and be a blessing. And that's why this Sunday, I want you your heart to be ready, your spirit to be alive as we are preparing to enjoy the blessing and the grace of God. So I want you to invite someone, bring somebody to church. I said it on Friday that in this year or in this uh, in this uh, time and in this season of everything being digital and even church being digital, some way, somehow it has helped uh, our ability to reach uh, to those that needs to be reached by the gospel even sometimes more easier. And that's why I want you this Sunday for just a few minutes. Will you invite somebody, tag somebody, share this video with someone, share this service with somebody, tell them it is church from the comfort of your own house. 
house. It is an experience that is about to change your life. I do believe that every day is special in the eyes of God and he has an agenda to bless you and to reveal himself to you greatly. So that's why this Sunday morning, also watch party, bring somebody along and let somebody know that God is doing something phenomenal in our life. So this Sunday, I want to invite all of you, whether you are it's your first time to join us. Be a part of our online family. We have uh, we have a very various contents that we, we post every single week. So we invite you to like, subscribe, and be a part of it, and turn on your notifications because every time we come on live, you will be the first to be notified that we are live. So this Sunday, we all very precious all that God is doing, and this week leading into Youth Youth Day on Tuesday, we are so glad that God is raising an army of young and, 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 and anointed uh, women of God uh, in our generation that are going to be and forming part of great and glorious things that God himself has in charge for us. So I want you where you are, if you are ready, I want you to invite you in the presence of God. We are going to say a prayer together. We are going to bow before him. We are going to acknowledge that our God is the reason why you and I woke up this morning. It is not an alarm clock that woke you up. It is God out of heaven. It calls you to wake up. So we are going to pray. Precious God, this morning it is my prayer that you bless somebody. What an immense blessing it is to come before your presence. I pray and I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus that you will touch us and that you will reveal yourself greatly to us. We ask in the name of Jesus that the paradigm of your glory be released upon us. We pray that Jehovah out of the heavenly, you shall shower us with your grace. You bring us in the place where the fullness of your presence is manifested. We bind everything that is not of you. We speak life into this broadcast today. We decree and declare, let the anointing of God, hallelujah, take over and release the grace, the virtue of anointing, the virtue of blessing, the virtue of grace. Lord, be released in the avenues of this service today that every man and woman, wherever they are, let them know, Father, know that you are a God of glorious things. It is in you we hope. It is you we trust. We come with you and we come to you with confidence, believing that this day it is going to be extraordinary. Unto you all the glory and praise and everybody says amen and amen. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Let me tell you before, uh, before we get into praise and worship, I often teach you that the prerequisite of praise, it is the breath of life. If there is breath in your lungs, this morning. I dare you to get out of your bed. I know it is cold. I, don't, you, I know you don't want to move no way, but let me tell you that this God is worth every praise in your bones and in your body. So let's get up and praise the Lord together with our music our ministry this Sunday morning. God richly bless you and I will see you right after this. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the name of the Lord wherever you are. This is the day that the Lord has made for you. You shall be glad and rejoice in it. Come on. Let's go to the Lord.
the final say.
Father, we thank you. We honor you for such worship, for such grace, for such presence. You love us so much. Your presence is alive in us and we are glad that you are choosing us and you are making us part of your doing in this season. How marvelous are your works. We declare your praises. Hallelujah. We declare your glory. We declare your praises. We say, Father, you are awesome. We say, Father, you are glorious. Who is like you in all the earth? Father, do the heavens declare your praises and the earth proclaim your praise. And we say, Father, you are worthy and you are high and lifted up. Today, be enthroned in our worship and we give you glory and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I want to invite you into a time of confession for every week. We go every time into our declaration. And as we go into the declaration, what happens is that we speak and we cause the weak to be pregnant with the word of God concerning our lives. And so I want you to lift your voice after me. Say, my God and my King, this very day, I am grateful. I am glad that you have given me the breath of life. To get out of my bed, stand up on my feet, give me food on my table, and clothes on my back. I thank you right now that you are working wonders in my life. I thank you right now because in this first half of the year, and as we get ready to cross into a new semester, we do believe that the best is yet to come. I decree and I declare, I prophesy upon this new week, the glory and the power of God to go ahead of me. I speak and I declare, oh you heavens hear me, oh you earth hear me, oh four walls of my house hear me. I decree and I declare, I am the blessed field of God. I speak and I prophesy. Every areas of my life challenge and bless in the name of Jesus. I break and I, I decree and I declare every scarcity is leaving me right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy and I declare every barrenness in my ground, every barrenness to my seed, every barrenness to my efforts is broken off my life in the name of Jesus. In this week I prophesy. I shall possess the gates of my enemy. Every stronghold where the enemy has had his power, has had his control. Lord, this Sunday morning, I take full control and I declare, in the mighty name of Jesus, the enemy is rebuked out of my way. In Jesus' mighty name, I take hold of the promises of God. I take hold of his word. I take hold of his yes. I take hold of his amen. I decree and I declare, it shall be so. Just as it was declared in the heavenly. I decree and I declare I am a candidate to divine favor. I am a candidate to open doors. Father, I decree and I declare that no doors shall resist me. Every frustration of doors, every frustration of employment, every frustration of finances, every frustration of re-income, I decree and I declare this Sunday under the sound of my voice, you frustration, you live my life in the mighty name of Jesus and I decree and I declare right now by the power of God the pathway to my week is cleared Monday is blessed Tuesday is blessed Wednesday is blessed Thursday is blessed Friday is blessed and Saturday is blessed and as even we go back on Sunday Lord Good morning and welcome to the Rama Church. I am Paco Amani presenting the Rama News. Tune in on Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 7.30 for the prophetic intercession. Same time 6.30 to 7.30 in the evening on Friday, we have the Word and Power service. And finally on Sunday morning from 9.30 to 10.30, we meet for the celebration service. Like and browse through our Facebook page, The Rama Church, as we edify your soul and feed your spirit with different messages and posts. If you have not yet subscribed to the Gelo Lukama channel on YouTube, 
please do so today and get notified via your gadget when we go live. Thank you for your unending support through your giving. Our banking details are on your screen for your love gift, offering, and support to the social care of the church. Friends, your contribution helps us support the family that are the most affected by this lockdown. It helps us honor all our bills as well. May God remember your finances. And now, please welcome our father, Pastor Gelod Lukama, for the rest of the program. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are once again grateful over the occasion and the blessing that Jehovah our God has been able to give us this Sunday. We do believe that this is a glorious day. This is an amazing day and we are getting ready to go into the Word of God. I've started talking about uh, uh, last week, started to teaching on a new series that I've titled A Prophetic Generation, understanding the prophetic and how does it relate to our time and our season. And it was very clear that the Word of the Lord was really positioning us for great things that God is getting ready to begin to do in this season. Therefore, I want to encourage each one of you to not miss any of this series. And if you know somebody that needs it, make sure you give them the address. I want to invite you once again to share this video with somebody as we get in the word uh, of God. Don't just listen to me. Make sure you are a part of the blessing of God to somebody's life as we are sharing in the word. Turn with me in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 27. Turn with me to the book of uh, Genesis chapter 27. I'll read from verses 1 until verses uh, uh, verses uh, 7. And then we're going to jump some verses and go for the sake of, uh, for the sake of uh, context. The Bible says, I'll read to your hearing, the Bible says, Now it came to pass when Isaac became old, and his eyes were so dim that he could not see, that he called Esau his older son, and said to him, My son, and he answered him, Here I am. Then he said, Behold, now I am old, and I do know I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore, please take your weapons and your quiver and your bow and go out to the field and out game for me. Make me a sovereign food such as I love. Bring it to me that I may eat and that my soul may bless you before I die. Now Rebecca was listening when Isaac spoke to Esau his son. Esau went to the field to hunt game and bring it to him and, 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 and to bring it. So Rebecca spoke to Jacob, her son, saying, Indeed, I heard your father spoke to Esau, your brother, saying, Bring me a game and make me savory food for me that I may eat it and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. Now, Therefore, my son, obey my voice according to what I command you. Go now to the flock and bring me the two choice kids of the goats, and I will make savory food from them and for your father such as he loves. Then you shall take it to your father that he may eat it and that he may bless you before his death." Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, look, Esau, my brother, is hairy, is a hairy man, and I am smooth-skinned man. Perhaps my father will fail me, and I shall be a deceiver to him, and I shall bring a curse over myself and not a blessing. But his mother said to him, let your curse be upon me, my son. Only obey my voice and go to them. In verses, in verses, in verses, uh, in, in verses, hallelujah, in, in verses uh, 17. Then she gave the savory food and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. 
And he went unto his father and said, My father, he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you have told me. Please arise and sit, eat my game, that your soul, come on, may bless me. That your soul may bless me. If that's your Bible, I want you to underline that your soul may bless me. Not your words, not your mouth, that your soul may bless me bless me. Isaac said to Jacob, please come near me. Uh, uh, verses 20, rather, the Bible said, but Isaac said to his son, how is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He said, because the Lord your God brought it to me. Then Isaac said to Jacob, please come near that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son or not. So Jacob went near to his father and he felt him and said, the voice of Jacob, uh, 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 the voice is Jacob's voice and the hands are the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him because he, his hands were airy like his brother Esau. And so he blessed him. So he blessed him. Then he said, are you really my son? He said, I am. He said, bring it to me near. I will eat my son game so that my soul may bless you. So he brought it near. He ate it and he brought him wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, come near and kiss me, my son. And he, he came near and kissed him and he smelled the smelling of his cloth and blessed him, said, and, and said, surely I smell the smell of my son is like the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. The smell of my son is the smell of a field which the Lord himself has blessed. This Sunday I am teaching on a subject prophetic canvas, prophetic canvas. I'm sure somebody is asking themselves, Pastor, what is this this morning now? Prophetic canvas. I am sure if you are a fan of art, if you love art, if you love painting, if you, if you have a taste of beautiful painting, you will notice that the painting is always on a frame, if not, that has either a wool or a woven uh, type of material on which the brushes of an artist has gone and the painting has been able to be expressed. So you will notice that it is with that canvas that the artist has the ability to express his gifts, express his uh, talent. So this Sunday, I want to marry the idea of a canvas with the prophetic. I want to marry the idea of the canvas with the prophetic. I want to begin by saying just few things. Any one or any desired result must first meet adequate conditions before it manifests. Any desired result must first meet adequate uh, 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 conditions before it manifests. Any result must meet, first of all, adequate conditions before it manifests. In the natural, we have learned through science the formation of rain. It talks about the sunshine shining over the sea, uh, uh, the sun shining over the sea or over the ocean, and the water uh, evaporates in the atmosphere. And uh, when it evapor evaporates in the atmosphere, it is then condensed in the air. And then the condensation of the, of, 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 the, of, the, of the water or the evaporated water forms what we call clouds. It forms what we call clouds. And the next cycle is what we call rain. It is out of that cycle that we will see rain. So until all conditions have been met, until every condition has been met, until all the things have come together, until there has been a sunshine, until until there's been a sunshine, until there's been a notion of evaporating water, until there's been a condensation in the atmosphere, there cannot be a result called rain. There cannot be a result called a rain. 
There is always conditions that must be gathered or that must be met before certain things happen. There are always conditions that must be met before certain things happen. And that's why I am here to say that a painter can be skilled. He can have the tools, but in the absence of a canvas, oh my God, he cannot e express his heart. He cannot express his heart. That's why you have to understand that every gift needs a platform. Every gift needs a platform. Oh yes, in the absence of a gift, in the absence of a platform, the gift cannot be expressed. In the absence of a canvas, an artist dies with the art unexpressed. It dies with art unexpressed. And that's why when we are dealing with the canvas... You must understand that a canvas is a substance that helps a artist manifest the gifts. A canvas is the substance that helps a artist manifest what a gift. If we are dealing with this, it is therefore important that we understand that any painting artist can be a man of few words, but if is given a canvas. He becomes a man of many brushes. Oh God, I say it again. That a man who is a painting artist can be a man of few words. But when given a canvas or when in front of a canvas, he becomes a man of many brushes. So a blank canvas is voided of beauty, although it has full potential of what could be if it is only allowed the touch of the artist. A canvas is voided of beauty, although it carries full potential, if only it could let itself be touched by the brushes of an artist. I know it, it may sound so abstract in my introduction, but I want you to note this, that your life carries so much potential if you could only let God color your world. Oh God, I said your life carries so much potential if you could only let God color your world. I believe that God is an amazing artist. You just have to read the book of Psalm chapter 8 verses 3 and verses 4 and hear what the psalmist says here. He said, when I consider your heavens, when I study your heavens, when I look closely and, and deeply to the heavens and the works of your hands and I look at the moons, the stars and all these beautiful things you have done, I can come to a conclusion and ask myself, what is man that you are mindful of him? What is he that you think of him? I do believe that God is a genius creator. I believe that he's a phenomenal producer. I believe that his heart, his heart goes beyond what, uh, uh, what we, can, we can even say uh, the great Michelangelo could have done in, in, modern, in, in, modern, in, in modern artistry or whatsoever. I do believe that God is a master designer. I do believe that our God is a genius artist, is a genius creator, is someone that does without replicating his de design. It is somebody that designs and creates without ever running out of idea and are running out of, of, of uniqueness and ways that it can be able to bring about what is needed in this uh, season. So there is always a canvas that facilitates the expression of God's divinity in our life. There is always a canvas that facilitates the expression of God's divinity of our lives. May I submit to you brothers and sisters that the prophetic, uh, the prophetic canvas of miracles it is faith every time you see faith you see room for a miracle you see room for the supernatural can I submit to you brothers and sisters that every time you see thanksgiving and you see praise it is a canvas for the presence of God every time all these things are come together are brought together you can notice one thing for sure is that the conditions are meant for the presence of God to be manifested 
and that's why I say that in the absence of the uh, in the cups in the absence of this canvas no one will ever know how beautiful life could be no one will ever know how wonderful God could be in the absence of a canvas no one will ever know what you are carrying in the inside of you no one could ever know I am trying to teach this Sunday by letting you know that it is time for us to present God a prophetic canvas and say God will you color my life will you color my world oh I'm gonna get to my text very soon but I want you to understand that the prophetic it is not always rational the prophetic is not always rational the prophetic is not always rational the prophetic is not always rational it is not always number two convenience the prophetic is not always convenient it is not always also tailored to meet your temperaments there's time the prophetic will always will will, will, will be so much far away from your comfort zone the prophetic does not have to meet your temperaments oh my god it doesn't even have to meet what you feel like is your 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 ways of living it is often on the other side of convenience. The prophetic, it is often on this other side of convenience. I remember one time Elijah was being sought after by a woman called Jehezabel. The Bible says, and God will say to him, go present yourself to Ahab the king, to Ahab the king. But Ahab the king is the husband of Jehezabel, of Jezebel who has been looking for uh, to, kill, uh, to kill Elijah the prophet. So if, if God is calling this man and say I want you to go meet this man I want you to go meet the king but the king's wife is the woman that is seeking to kill the prophet of God how inconvenient can that be that's why I am here to say you that the, the prophetic is sometimes on the other side of convenience it is on the other side of your comfort zone we are talking about a prophetic canvas I want you to know that the prophetic is always is always and often on the other other side of convenience it is on the other side of the comfort zone so here in the text as I begin to deal with it in the book of Genesis chapter 27 we will understand that Abraham had a son a son of promise is the unique son as to God calling him is, is the unique son the one that carries the promise is unique indeed you've had Ishmael but you, there is one that carries the promise and that is Isaac the Bible said that Isaac will have will get married to Rebecca and sometimes later they will struggle to have children Isaac prayed for his wife the wife conceived and then all of a sudden the wife started feeling like a fight inside her and God said there are two nations there are two nations in your womb because she prayed to God and inquired and said if God I am blessed why am I feeling like this God said you feel like that because there are two nations in your womb and God began to prophesy he says that the old or the younger shall have dominion over the older he says that the younger shall outsmart or shall outdo or shall be greater than that of his older brother so the Bible says that as he, and the finally get born the, the, the twins the Bible say one is called Esau and the other one is called a Jacob because of the way it came out of their mother's womb so the Bible says sometimes later Isaac became old and as it is often tradition in the Jewish culture that when a father becomes old he never dies without releasing the blessing on the firstborn he never dies without releasing the blessing my God on the firstborn he never dies without releasing the blessing on the firstborn so the father says I am I am old my eyes are dimmed I cannot see clearly and I do not know the day I am going to die so therefore my son Esau you are my firstborn I want you to go out I want you to go in the bushes I want you to take all your weapons and find me a game find me a donkey find me a goat find me something that you are going to bring so that I may eat and that my soul may bless you that my soul may bless you that my soul come on 
may bless you. So it, it, it came to pass that Esau uh, uh, find himself in a place where he, he, he has to leave and he goes looking for, uh, for, for something that he was going to earn so he could come back, prepare the meal according to his father's taste. I want you to understand that the prophetic blessing is never released by accident. A prophetic blessing is never released by accident. A prophetic blessing is never released by accident. There is always a, uh, there is always a background picture. There is always a prophetic canvas that precedes the prophetic blessing. There is always a prophetic canvas that precedes the prophetic blessing. I will say it again. There is always a prophetic canvas that precedes the prophetic uh, blessing. So the Bible says here in, in verses number four, it says, make me a tasteful food or make me a delicious meal such as I love and when I eat it I will, my soul will bless you. I want to submit to you brothers and sisters here that are listening to me and watching me this Sunday. I want you to know that the prophetic canvas for the prophetic blessing because the prophetic blessing is not just for you but it is for you and your generations and Isaac is getting ready to release a prophetic blessing upon his son Isaac not a blessing that he will enjoy not not a blessing that he will that will also all only have impact upon him but that will also carry the genes and the DNA of the blessing across the generations to come so he's getting ready to pass on that kind of blessing this is not a God bless you a kind of break a blessing this is not a God of ah you are highly favored this is something that carries the mandate to be transmitted over over generations. It is the kind of blessing that you are now charged with as part of the legacy that you are going to give to the people that are coming after you. Oh, brothers and sisters, I want you here to understand that every prophetic blessing are always, are always released under certain condition. And here you will notice that if it is the father who wants to bless the children, if it is a father who wants to release the father, the, the, why is it that it needs to impose the condition? Oh, I want to submit to you, brothers and sisters, that the first prophetic canvas of a prophetic blessing, the prophetic canvas of a prophetic blessing is the anger of the father the anger of the father it is the prophetic canvas for the prophetic blessing there is never going to be a generational blessing released over your life without first meeting the anger of the father releasing that blessing oh come on somebody i'm going to break it down for you for the but for the father to bless the son he needed to eat the condition for the father to bless the son he needed to eat and how can I eat if I'm not angry oh yes how can I eat if I am not angry so I cannot eat unless I am hungry therefore it means that unless the father angers the blessing cannot be released oh my God I said unless the father angers the blessing cannot be released because in order for the blessing to be released the father got to get hungry the, got to, the father got to get hungry and the anger becomes the prophetic canvas come on somebody that allows the prophetic blessing to be released are you listening to me so so listen to me here. It is unfortunate for the children when their father is no longer hungry. Oh yes. It is unfortunate. It is a misfortune. It is a dilemma for the children when their father is no longer hungry. Because when the father is no longer hungry, it is no more in a position to eat something that comes from the substance of their sons. And when the father cannot eat what comes from the substance of their head or the hands of their sons, therefore the prophetic blessing it is a blessing of multi-generations. It cannot be released. Listen to me. <laughs> listen, listen here. The door to our blessing is shut when God is no longer angry to receive our sacrifices. 
The door to our blessing is shut, totally shut, when God is no longer hungry to receive our sacrifices. The hunger of the Father preserve us and usher us into a place where we are in a position to meet the need. That's why I am here to tell you, every time God allows you to meet a need of somebody that he has, over, he has placed over your life, every time God allows you to meet the need of someone that he has established over your life as a prophet or as a man of God or as a father, whatsoever connotation that is, every time God gives Give you an opportunity such as that. Know that it is not only a blessing you are receiving, but it is a multi generational blessing. It is a oh my God, you're not listening to me. <laughs> let, let, go, 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 go with me, go with me. Oh, yes, I like this, I like this. Come on, go with me, go with me in the book of uh, uh, First Kings. Hallelujah! Oh, yes. The Bible is talking about the widow of Zarephath. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, yes. Listen. 1 Kings chapter 17 verses from verses number 8. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Arise and go to Zarephath which belongs to Sidon and dwell there. And see, I have commanded a widow day to feed you. And so he arose and went to Zarephath. Listen, my God. The reason why the man of God is moving from where he is to Zarephath is because he's angry. I said, it's because he's hungry. I'm feeling this thing. Come on, somebody. I said, it's because he's hungry. So anger moved him from where he is to the place where God is commanding him. Now, the woman is the woman to whom God is sending is a woman that is also having a problem. And now you and I will think that God is unfair. But listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Oh my God, oh my God. The Bible says... So he arose and went to Zarephath, and the widow was gathering sticks and called her and said, Please bring me a morsel of little water, and I may drink. And as she was going, he said, Called her, and please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she, so she said, As long as the, uh, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bean and a little jar of oil. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and myself that we may eat and do what? Die. That we may eat and do what? And die. The reason why God is sending this woman is because uh, the reason why God is sending Elijah to this woman is because God wants the generation of this woman to survive what the country is going through. And the reason why God is giving them an opportunity to survive is because there was an anger in the, in, 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 in the mind or in the life of Elijah. So the Bible says it came to pass. It came to pass. Elijah said in verses 13, it says, do not fear, go and do as you say, but make me a morsel of cake. Small cake first and bring it to me. Afterward, make some for yourself. For thus says the Lord, your God of Israel, that the jar of oil shall not, the, the bean of flour shall not run dry, shall not be used up, and so shall the jar of oil not run down until the day the Lord sends rain on earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household did what? Eight for many days. What she had was enough for her and her son only. But after she had released it in the hands of the man of God, a prophetic canvas was opened and the prophetic blessing was now released. And what will happen here, beloved, is that this woman, not only her, but her child and everybody under her responsibility were able to survive for many days. How? We don't know. But one thing you know is that the prophetic blessing was released. So every time the father angers, he releases room for the prophetic blessing. Amen. That's why I want to encourage you, beloved, that in this season, your prophetic sensitivity does not just deal with prayer, 
but it also deals with observation. Amen. I told you that there are three tools that God gives every prophet. He gives him vision, he gives him ears to listen, and he gives him a mouth to speak. And most importantly, many times God will use observation, the sight, the vision of a prophet in order for him to identify the needs that he needs to met, to be met. So in this text, we understand that Isaac conditioned the prophetic blessing by his ability to eat something from the hands of his son. This is very deep because what will, hallelujah, resote yabaka, lando rebel. Listen, what will then usher the next prophetic canvas? Because the first canvas is the anger of the father. That is the first space we need to create. The hunger of the Father. We got to be able to notice, know the hunger of the Father. And secondly, it is the joy of the hearts. The joy in the heart of the Father. Oh yes, I will say it again. The merry heart of the Father is the second prophetic canvas for the prophetic blessing. What is the prophetic blessing, Pastor? It is a multi-generational blessing. The blessing that goes to your children's children and their children's children. For the Bible says, I will bless you and the blessing shall be of ten generations. This is the prophetic blessing. Now, Isaac says, I want you to go out for me and please bring me the game. Bring me the food. Make it as I desire it. Prepare my favorite. In, in, the, in another version it says, prepare my favorite dish. Bring it here to me. For me to eat it. That my soul may bless you. Listen to me, beloved. To be prophetic is not just doing or saying what you think God wants. It's about knowing and understanding his instruction. Bring me my favorite food, not your favorite food. <laughs> Bring me my favorite food, such as I lack. Bring it and make it the way I want it. Listen, we have to stop thinking about what we think God wants and start listening at, at what he's saying, listening to his instruction. Stop trying to guess that this is maybe what God wants. Ask what God do you want? Because the releasing of the blessing is dependent upon you pleasing his heart. Oh my God. It's dependent upon you pleasing his heart. Because until a father's heart has been merry, has been happy, has been joyful, the blessing cannot leave his mouth. Amen. Because here, Lady Esther, we understand that it is not the mouth that speaks. It is not the mouth that bless, but it is the soul that bless. That's why I like what David says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, not my lips. It is possible that my lips can say things that is not coming from my soul, but bless the Lord, oh my soul, because the soul never lies. Oh my God, I, I, I can lie with my words. I can, I can camouflage my word and be politically correct with my word, but the heart will never lie. And so when God wants to bless, he doesn't bless with word. He bless with his heart. Hallelujah. When God bless, he doesn't bless with word, but he bless with his heart. Listen to me, beloved. A father's joyful heart fill his mouth with nothing but blessing. Amen. A father's joyful heart fill his mouth with nothing but blessing. It fills his heart with nothing but blessing. Even when curse wants to come, it can't come out of his mouth. Because when a heart is happy, when the heart of a father is happy, that heart can bring nothing but blessing. And guess what? You don't even have to hear it. The position of his heart being happy makes it for you to be a recipient of a prophetic blessing. Hallelujah. Listen to me, beloved. Joy can be provoked. Mm. How do you provoke joy? 
by knowing what the person like. Yes. Esau received instruction from his father. He said, bring it such as I like. And when my heart, when, when I have eaten, my soul is merry that I may bless you. Listen. A prophetic people is one that understands how to touch God's soft spots. A prophetic people is those that understand. A prophetic generation are those that understand that God has a soft spot. When you can touch that soft spot, you can encounter the blessing that David encountered in the book of 2 Samuel chapter number 2. It's quite a long read, but I like it. I like it. I like it. I'm getting ready to close. 2 Samuel chapter 7. 2 Samuel chapter 7. Look at what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Somebody say the prophetic blessing. The prophetic blessing. Is coming on the prophetic canvas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says this. Now it came to pass. When the king was dwelling. When the king. Hallelujah. Was dwelling in his house. And the Lord had given him rest. From all his enemies all around. There was no more war. There was just peace all around him. And that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in the tent of curtains. Then Nathan said to the king, Go and do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. My God, look at this. For the Lord is with you. But it happened, it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Will you build a house for me to dwell in? For I have not dwelt in a house since the time I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt. Even to this day, I've moved from tents into a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about with all the children of Israel, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel whom I've commanded to shepherd my people of Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to not my son, but my servant David. Thus you shall say to my servant David. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep to the ruler over my people and over Israel. I have given you, I have been with you wherever you have gone and I've cut all your enemies from before you and I've made you great, I've made your name great like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Moreover, I will appoint a place where, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them and that they may dwell in that place of their own and move no more. So shall their sons of the wicked oppress them and as previously since the time I commanded the judges to be over my people Israel have caused you to raise from all your enemies and also the Lord tells you that it will make you a house verses 12 when your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers I will set what your seed after you and who will Come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chastise him with the rod of men, with the bows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I have removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be established forever. According to all this word and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Listen here. David thinks, 
Say, I have had all these things, but there is one thing missing. There is something, there is a dimension I need to get to. And he says, the ark of God has been on the street for so long. We've been moving from places to places. I live in a house better than what God lives in. This can't be right. He asks himself these questions and he says, I'm going to build God a house. God is shocked. And he cannot believe that a man is doing something he has not requested. You see, the problem of you and I is that we always want to be requested to do something that at the end will benefit us. Oh yes, the challenge with you and I, honestly speaking, and I'm talking to you now as your pastor, is that you want to be requested in doing something that you better know that this is the key to what is needed for you. David did not wait for fundraising. David did not wait for Prophet Nathan and say, who has 5,000, who have 10,000, we want to build God a house. David understood that this God, there is something in it. And I say to you, the anger of a father is the blessing of the son. The anger of the father is the... God was hungry to have a place to be. But nobody could guess or tap in to the mind of God. So David just thought to build God a house and spoke to prophet Nathan. And God says to Nathan, say, go tell David that nobody has ever thought such thing for me. It has been going on for generations. Nobody has ever thought something like that for me. And because he has thought about it like that for me, please tell him that I establish his kingdom forever. Meaning that after David, there will be no man that shall sit in the throne that will not be of the root of David. Isn't that a prophetic blessing? Because Jesus Christ, when he will come on the earth, he will be traced to the root of David as his great, great grandfather to the point that he will sit and rule. Come on. He will sit and rule in the throne of David because God made the promise to a man who had a prophetic canvas and said, God, I am going to paint you. I am going to give you space for you to be God among us. And he said, I am going to give you a place. Whatever it is, I am going to give you a house that you're you, may be able, you may be able to dwell in. God said, I've never heard such. Yes. The problem with you and I is that we wait. We are waiting so much to be told what to do. There is no sensitivity. There is no direction. There are certain things, it takes just sensitivity. Mm. This week I was so blessed. Two gentlemen called me and said, Pastor, there is this that we want to do. And then as soon as I, I, I heard their call, it was little things. And, 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 and it, it, I, I so appreciated because that, that it was the hearts with which they came with it. The heart with which they came to bring what they came to bring. It was so touching. And so and all of them called me in one morning and in, in the, and just 30 minutes after the other. One comes and then after the other, the one go, goes out and then as he's going out, another person comes. And I ask myself, I say to my wife, I said, these people have just stolen the blessing out of me. I didn't even have to say it. But because of the joy they've been able to bring in my heart, wherever they go, they are already blessed. That is how the enemy cannot steal a blessing that has come from a joyful heart. I will say it again. The devil cannot steal a blessing that comes from a merry heart. You are already blessed before it's even spoken. So, as I close, Esau is out trying to find what his father asked for. But next to the father, next to the room where the father was, all next to the tent, I would imagine those days, Rebecca was listening. And mind you that Rebecca had the revelation. She knew who must carry the blessing. Yes. I am, I am, I am thankful for prophetic mothers. I, I am, I am, I am grateful. 
for prophetic mothers. Mothers who hold the secret mm. of the becoming of their children. Hallelujah. Listen, Rebecca, when she was pregnant, I said to you in the introduction that she asked God, he said, if I am, if I am blessed, why am I feeling like this? Why is there so much fight in my womb? God said, you are carrying two nations. Mm. The younger shall subdue the older. And when she heard that the father was about to bless the, the older, I told you that the prophetic is always on the other side of convenience. Mm. She decided to get in the wrong so that she could be able to fix things according to the prophetic picture. Oh my mm. God. That there was a prophetic picture that was going to be painted and it was not going to pay, be painted otherwise. God needed everything to be set in the right place. That is how I am here to tell you somebody that what is yours nobody else can take it. Hallelujah. Jacob, this thing from your womb, God said it was yours. Oh, you are born culture said it is the first born but God had already decided that this thing is yours. So so the mother begins to, pro, to, 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 pro, to, to paint a prophetic canvas. She begins to paint a prophetic canvas so that the son will be in the right place for earth for him to receive what the father is about to receive. Listen to me here, brothers and sisters. Oh, I feel like preaching this word to somebody. Is that there is always a prophetic reality to every reality we see. Or oh, sometimes the prophetic reality doesn't make sense to our tradition. It doesn't make sense to our customs it doesn't make sense to what we know but it is something that deals with what heaven has already aligned because there shall be something known as the God of Abraham the God of Je uh, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob there will never be such thing as the God of Abraham the God of Isaac and the God of Esau it was already arranged like that in the prophetic so here the, the, the Bible says that Jacob will find, will take, will take, will take, will take the food that was cooked by a mother. The mother knows how the father likes his food. It was done perfectly. So when the father sees and he smells the food, his heart is already excited. Let me hear, let me tell somebody here that every time we begin to please God, there is something in God that cannot make him release or that can make him stop from releasing the blessing. Every time you come before God and your heart and your life is so pleasing to him and faith is present and your joy and the fear of the Lord is filling you and it's, it's, it's transpiring as to everything that you do. You begin to walk in the fullness of God. The Bible says when he saw the food, it was exactly what he wanted. It was exactly how he wanted it and the prophetic canvas was already presented and what was left to do it was for the artist to begin to paint. Come on somebody. Every Every time you bring to God what he requested or what he's expecting you to bring in that season, whether he said it or whether it was by divine prompting or divine prophetic prompting in your life, I want you to know that the, the scene is already set. Oh yes, the, the, the feast is already, is already moderated and God is getting ready to usher you into the fullness of his blessing. Now let me conclude by saying that Jacob has a dilemma because his brother is hairy, is hairy. His brother has a skin that is hairy and he is smooth skinned. And so, and as much as he wants to take the blessing, if there, is a, there is an inconvenience is that he does not have the skin of his brother. Isn't this a prophetic picture that Jesus will paint on the cross that we, we were not deserving. It was not us who were supposed to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Yet Jesus Jesus, the Lamb of God, He was slain for our sin. So we took His skin, we took His flesh, we took His body, we took what was His, and so we presented ourselves before God. And when God came, He felt us. He said, "You feel like Jesus, but in reality, your voice sounds like a Lord Lukama." And I say, "Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, it is Jesus," because everybody that 
that is born again, it is born, they are born in the newness of life. So what I'm trying to tell you right now is that in this prophetic season, you got to learn how to be prophetic. You got to learn how to step in the shoes of a prophet when you need to be. Oh yes, come on somebody. They got a time where you got to wear the garment of a prophet and begin to prophesy over yourself. So Isaac had to wear the garment of Esau in order for him to be positioned for the blessing that the father needed to be released. Oh yes, the prophetic canvas was that the father needed to be hungry and he brought the food and the father's heart was was merry. It was already enough for the blessing to be released. Now come on somebody when he could feel it and when he could hear the voice and it was no way that he could see the sun. So the Bible says he ate and he ate and he ate. What I am thinking Lady Esther is that as soon as I smell the food I could be in a hurry to, uh, to prophesy or to bless myself. But the father say even before I prophesy even before I say it I gotta eat it first. That's why you gotta know that the prophetic key to the prophetic blessing in this generation is a prophetic canvas. What is a prophetic canvas? Make the heart of the father merry. Hallelujah. Make the heart of the father happy. If you please the father, God I am here to tell you the prophetic blessing is released without even any demon having any absolute capacity to dismantle it in the name of Jesus. So this Sunday morning I am here to invite you. Make God proud. Make God happy. Make your father happy. Oh yes. The Bible says honor the Lord and honor the father and your mother and so your blessing or your day shall be long. The reason why that blessing has longevity is because it carries the joy in the heart of the parent. So I am here to tell you every time you find yourself in a place where the father has eaten your food, he has eaten the word, the, 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 the fruit of your labor, he has eaten the fruit of your sacrifices, the father has no choice. Even an evil man, he, the Bible says, uh, out of the evilness of their heart, when it comes to their son, he brings the best. Come on, somebody. Even an evil father, when it comes to his son, when the son makes him happy, he brings the best out of him. So I am here to tell you, in this season, there can be a blessing sitting next to you, but you are letting that blessing pass you by because you are used to people begging you. You are letting that blessing pass you by because you are waiting for the time that somebody will come and beg you. But I I am here to tell you, if you are prophetic, you will understand that there are certain seed I sow because there has to be a person that is heart, that whose heart is merry. Let me tell you, there are certain, I'm close, I'm close, I'm close already. There are certain witchcraft that cannot be able to overtake you because the numbers of people who are happy for you are many than those who have a heart against you. Oh yes, I have learned to sow seed into my father's life. I've learned to make my father happy to the place that his smile is already speaking thousands of blessings into my life, not only into my life into my wife's life, into my children's life and everything around me and there is no way that the devil can come and attack you and win over you when your father is happy and how much more about our heavenly father when he received the sacrifice of his only begotten son, he said behold this is my beloved son, he in whom I am well pleased. Hear him and you shall be saved. This Sunday morning I dare you. In this season, the prophetic canvas is calling you somebody. It is calling you to pay attention that the father's hunger is the son's blessing. The father's hunger is the son's blessing. Whenever there is a father's hunger, there is an opportunity for the son to inherit the blessing of the father. And as I speak this over your life, I decree and I declare, may you make them, you may you make merry, may you make joyful the heart of your father, that in this season the blessing of God yes. will not miss to locate you. Thank you. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, I am not one that often asks. I am not one that often claims. I am not one that often let myself be at the mercy of people. But here I am teaching you a very fundamental principle for the prophetic blessing. 
you have to learn to sow seeds. Make the heart of your father merry. You will be blessed. And the heart that is merry has received the blessing without even going to war for it. Some people are fighting over the crumbles when they are forgetting the principle. I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about your father. Mm. When was the last time was he happy about you? Mm. I'm not just talking about your father. I'm talking about your heavenly father. Mm. When was the last time he was happy about you? That's how reconciling our prophetic blessing mm. needs us to reconcile our relationship Amen. with our father. Yes, Lord. Listen to me. My heart is ready to bless you. Mm. My mouth have words filled with nothing but blessings for you. I ask and I pray in this season that you understand that the hunger of a father is a blessing to his sons. Mm. When the father is hungry, the children are getting ready to be blessed. Yes. So this Sunday, I dare you, wherever you are, it is time for us to move into the prophetic. There are things, there are words, there are things you got to do. And everything that we do with biblical principles, it brings in the promised blessings of God. What is amazing, Lady Esther, is that when Esau comes back later on, when Esau shows up later on and he goes to his father and says, here is the food you wanted. The father says, I have no more blessing. Mm. How, how does the father say, I don't have no blessing? Don't, don't you have any words you can say, God bless you? Don't you have any good thing you can say? But I've come to realize the father was already full. Mm. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. The father <laughs> was already full. There was no more room for him to eat because the prerequisite for him to release the blessing was his hunger. The hunger was a prophetic canvas. Unless the son could see the hunger of a father, he could not receive the blessing of the father. So Esau cries he said, Father, the food is here. He said, yes, the food is here. But I'm already full. I believe last week I was talking to a young man. We sat and just by prophetic uh, uh, impulse, I just began to share out of what I'm teaching here. I said to them that there will come a time that what is a need today won't be a need tomorrow. Yes. A blessing can be only a blessing when there is a need. And what if there is no need? What are you going to do? I told you of the story when Jesus was embalmed, in fact anointed by that woman who was considered a prostitute. Her name was Mary. How convenient. Her name was Mary. She took an alabaster box and broke it at the feet of Jesus. Expensive perfume. Now when Jesus is dead, and the women are coming with spices, perfumes, and everything else, trying to wash his body, embalm his body, it is useless, because the father is no more hungry. The blessing for you is to seize the opportunity in the opportunity of a lifetime. There will be, there will, there, in, in, the, in the few coming months, there will no longer be anything that we will talk about, bring a brick, bring a cement. In the next coming months, once the work is completed, there will no longer be any calls for rent support or whatsoever, because the time will have moved on. What if the need you see is the key to your blessing? 
What if what everybody else is not seeing, but you only are seeing, is the key to your breakthrough? I want you to be like David. How can I live in a house beautiful and miss the blessing of God? I'm sorry I was too long this Sunday. But I do believe that certain things needs all the time to be instilled in our culture. I'm very serious. We got to do better. We got to do what God is calling us to do. Your sensitivity in the prophetic must outdo your reasoning. Your sensitivity in the prophetic to the voice of God must be bigger than your rational. Because if your rational is bigger than what God is saying, it might be possible that what God is saying, you don't get part to it. I pray in the name of Jesus that God bring you closer. That in this season, as the heart of your father is Mary, we speak and declare, generations after you are blessed, we declare the fullness of the blessing of God. We decree and declare right now in Jesus' name. Lebro sondo yabakaba. Lebre sende ibra. I'm prophesying. I hear number four. And there are four people I'm prophesying over this Sunday. And you are hearing this message with another tone. They are, they are clear instruction you are hearing. Four people. Clear things you are hearing. When you heard me preach, four, there's four of you. Clear things that you are hearing, that you are, you are, you are, you are taking as decision. Has you heard me preach? There's four of you. And the Lord said to me to tell you right now that the joth will not kill you. La sécheresse ne va pas te tuer. I heard it in French. La sécheresse ne va pas te tuer. I heard it clearly. The joth will not clear you. Don't delay. Do what you got to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, in this season, may we make you proud. May we make you happy. May the days of our life be days of blessings. Thank you that there is a greatest change. Thank you that you took our place so we can qualify for what you are doing. It is in the name that is above every name that you give us your spirit and your will to do what you have called us to do. It is in Jesus' name I've prayed. And everybody says, Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. We thank Him and we give Him glory for the opportunity to have shared the word. If this was word was a blessing for you, text me after service. Let me know that it was a blessing to you. Never be quiet over good things. Always share all that God is doing for your life. I want to end this service with giving every one of us an opportunity to give, give our offering, give our tithes. And as we say that it's not a full service without having an opportunity to worship God with the substance of our giving. The prophetic blessing was conditioned by releasing something out of our hands. And so Esau went to aunt, but Jacob got it first, brought to his father, his father ate and blessed him. May your substance you bring to your father today be of great blessing. I speak it over your life that your seed is blessed. Your offering, your tithe is blessed. Father, I pray for everyone specifically that in this season I've taken a pledge to be a blessing to our church, a blessing to our building project as we attempt to fast track it. By faith, Father, we decree the opening of divine resources. And may your people be blessed. We declare this grace to open up favor over your life. Let the heavenly avenues see you in the name of Jesus. So we declare grace and blessings over you and your family in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. Glory to God. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. This coming week, we are going to be taking two days of prayer. That is going to be Thursday and Friday. 
Thursday and a Friday. We are going to be taking time to pray, seek the face of God. And the time will be from 6.30 to 7.30. On, on these two days, it is going to be on Zoom only, Thursday and Friday. It's going to be on Zoom only. And I'm going to be having a guest, Prophet Seba, all the way from Lubumbashi, who is going to be ministering to us. The reason why I want it to be a close access as a service is because I want you to benefit in maximum, to benefit in maximum what God is getting ready to do with you and the entire church family. So uh, I want you to share with this word. And therefore, uh, Wednesday, we have prophetic intercessor with Prophetess Esther. Thursday and Friday, please fast, be in prayer. This is the season we want to activate things in the spiritual for the blessing of God to be manifested. Thursday and Friday. We look forward to this time of prayer and hear God as He gives and provide direction to where we are going. The blessing of God is over you and we decree and declare it shall be well with you. May this week be blessed as we have confessed and declared in Jesus' name. You need information concerning the building, kindly contact our office. The banking details are also available so you can sow your seed and make sure we run this project as fast as possible to the glory of God. We love you and we appreciate you. God bless you and have yourself a great Sunday. Bye-bye.